Hello again. Uh, if you're a regular visitor to my YouTube channel, you'll know that I've done one or two videos on scroll saws and fret working in general. You'll also know that I've got two main fret saws. One's a diamond and the other's a Hegner. I've done an in-depth review of the diamond fret saw, but I've never really done one on the Hegner machine. And I thought it might be useful for somebody who's considering buying one, or who's just got one and don't really know a great deal about it, if I did a little video on the particular machine, uh, what I think of it, and explain some of its features. Now when it comes to buying a scroll saw, the Hegner machine is not the cheapest, in fact they're rather expensive. But for the money, you do get a damn good saw, and one that will last a lifetime and beyond. They really are made in old school quality. They're, they're really good quality machines. Now there are plenty of scroll saws on the market. And I'm not going to run any of them down because I don't know a great deal about them. I've heard good reports and bad reports. Uh, if you're going to buy a decent scroll saw, you could do a lot worse than buying a Hegner. Now I've had this Hegner for over 20 years and it's been really brilliant and I don't regret spending the money on it. It did cost quite a lot of money. Uh, they are rather expensive machines to buy, but they're worth every penny in my opinion. And, it, and it's the old adage, isn't it? You... You think, well, I'll, I'll save a bit of money and buy a cheaper one, and then you regret it, and, and forevermore you wish you'd bought the better one. Whereas if you do buy the better one, it might cost a bit more, but you'll soon forget the extra money you spent, but you'll never forget that the experience of using it if you find it's a decent machine. So if you can, try and buy a decent machine. And the Hegner is definitely a decent machine. Now, I'll just explain a few features of it. First of all, it doesn't come with this wooden table. This is something that I've added at a later date. And I'm just going to take it off to show what the machine's like when you get it. So I'll remove that. I'll explain the table in a moment. I can't get it off now. Just clips on there. I'll just put the table down there out of the way. This, this is a machine as it arrives from the factory, basically. You've got an alloy table on it. It's very, very strong quality. Uh, most of the machine is cast iron. The, the one really good point about the Hegner is it's got an induction motor. Now I'm going to switch this machine on before we go any farther so you can hear how quiet it is. Now, the first thing to say about the Hegner, it's got a variable speed. And I'll show you the controls in a moment. With the variable speed you can turn the saw down so slow that it basically works the same as a hand saw up. And it's still smooth. Or you can increase the power. fastest speed so it is quite handy that having a variable speed now a lot of people say you don't need a variable speed now actually if you're that could be true in some ways if you if you buy a variable speed machine you'll find it very helpful especially if you're a beginner the, the thing is if you're cutting thicker material like this piece of wood here then it's not so much of a problem because the saw will take time because of the resistance of the timber. But if you're cutting very thin stuff like this, which is thin plywood, which is little more than an eighth of an inch thick, the saw is going to whiz through it very quickly and you're going to have a job to control it. I'll just illustrate that now by turning the machine on at the faster speed. And you see at that speed, I've only got a fine blade in by the way, so it's not that quick. But it, it goes through there so quickly that if you're a beginner, you may have a job to control it. On the other hand, if you turn the speed, you turn the speed down like that, you can get it as slow as you like. You can take your time and just go through the machine gently, and it gives you time to think about it and manoeuvre the saw like so. If you're doing very delicate projects, variable speed is definitely at work, well worth having. For the extra cost involved, it's worth doing, I think. Now as I mentioned, the Hegner is equipped with an induction motor, which in my opinion is the best possible motor to have, because there are several reasons why. First of all, they're very, very reliable. There are no carbon brushes in it to wear out. They're not harsh, they're very smooth running, they're very quiet and they're very reliable. And uh, personally, I would always look, any woodworking machines, I always look for an induction motor. If I see it's got a carbon brush, or commonly known universal motor, I'm always a bit dubious because universal motors are very good in their place. I mean, in things like vacuum cleaners, you need it because you need the speed for the suction. Because um, a universal motor will go really, really fast, whereas an induction motor is limited by the frequency and the voltage. Now, here's another view of the induction motor. 
and this is the speed control. Down on the side here there's a little rocker switch which turns the machine on and off and basically you just turn this knob to vary the speed which goes right down from practically nothing just ticking over to 1400. I'll turn that off so you can hear. Under here this is just a little cover this is where the blade fits I'll just switch it on so you can see it working and you'll see it uses a little knife edge, what they call a knife edge block there, and the same on the top, but I'll show you that in a moment. This, this little knob here is, you loosen this to adjust the angle of the table, and there's a guide round here that shows you what the angle is, but they're not always accurate though, so it's best to use a measure. Now when you first buy the saw, it's always important to make sure you've got the table set up level, so that it's at right angles with the blade. On this side of the saw you've got a little bellows which is pushed up and down by the lower arm. That's connected to a little pipe here which acts as a blower and blows the sawdust away from the work if you want to do that. Some people connect it up to a vacuum extractor and extract it but that's just a little bellows. When I'm around this side of the saw I'd just like to point out that the only maintenance required on this saw apart from blowing the sawdust out is to just drop a, a bit of oil on the pivot points, the upper the, the lower and upper arms, there's a little label telling you to do that anyway. You just put a drop of oil in there and down in there and that's about it. You don't need to do anything else to it. Now from time to time I read comments from people on various websites about how difficult it is to change the blade on a Hegner. Well if you've heard that, don't take any notice of it because it's nonsense and I'll show you just how easy it is. Now for normal Hegners, without this particular, I've got a special clamp on here called a quick clamp and I'll go into that in a moment, but for, for earlier models they came with two of these little knife edge blocks here and the idea was you put one on each end of the saw and popped it in. Now to fit the blade into the block all you do is pop the block into the little box on there, the little fitment ready for it, get your blade, I've got a spare one under here somewhere, this will do for the de purpose of demonstration. Take your blade and make sure it's in the right orientation. So the blade, the, the teeth have to point out that way, away from the machine, and in that way, so it goes that way. You can always tell, even if you've got a very fine blade, if you rub your finger along the blade, you'll feel the sharp edge, so you'll know that's the correct way it goes in. And you simply pop it in the, this is a quite a thick blade actually, you pop it in the block like that, Get your key, tighten him up, and that's it. And then you do the same with the other end, and then you pop the blade in. I'll just take this one out so I can show you the way without the quick clamp. Uh, if you've got the machine without the special quick clamp, you'll end up with your blade like that in the two blocks. And all you've got to do to put it in the saw, make sure you've got it right way up, Feel it with your fingers, the teeth have to point down. If you put it in the wrong way up, the wood will jump up all the, it'll drive you mad, it'll jump up and down. So make sure it's that way with the teeth facing down. And just simply put it through the slot in the table and hook it underneath. You can do it without even looking, you don't need to look at it. And then this pops into the top blade holder, like so. This should be like the way of it. That pops into the top blade holder and it's just left loose like that. And then when you use the machine, it allows this knife edge to pivot and give you a, a more of a true vertical motion. So that's the, that's the way it comes normally, but later models and better models use a thing called the quick clamp. Now, when I bought my machine, it came with this quick clamp already supplied, and if you haven't got one and you've got a Hegner machine, do buy one because it will revolutionize your cutting. It is dramatic, I wouldn't want to live without that. They're quite expensive to buy, but they are well worth it, they're worth every penny if you're doing a lot of work. And I'll show you why now. I'm going to take this blade out and I'll show you the using the quick clamp. I never use it this method, I always use a quick clamp. Once you put the blade in, always push that down to get the tension correct. Earlier models don't have this and it's definitely a boon. You can check the tension, how, how much it should be, by pinging the blade. That's not enough. You can tell by the sound of it, that's not right. That's better. It's got a nice ping to it. A bit more, perhaps. That's about right. It's, it's re Actually, it's the, the uh, blades on there are, making a, are, are um, vibrating with it. If it sounds like that, you've got the right tension. Anyway, I'll take this one out and I'll put the, the uh, quick clamp in and explain that one now. Right, now this is the quick clamp. 
and as I said if you haven't got one you should get one because they're they're invaluable and what you do you pop it in the top holder like so and then tighten this down now according to Hegner you're supposed to tighten it down so that that is actually tight there's a little what there is there's a little recess in the top of the clamp where this little end of this bolt fits and holds it and they suggest you tighten it down so it's tight what I do I don't tighten it completely I just have it like that so that the thing can move so it can rock slightly as it's meant to do but at the same time this stops it from falling out so it's fairly tight in there you can work with it but it won't fall out that's the, that's the thing so you pop your clamp in there now I'm going to put the blade in take your blade already in the block and poke it through the table through the slot in the table and hook it into the the, the correct place underneath with your fingers just hold the top uh, arm down slightly and then tighten up the quick clamp on the blade like so and then retension it by pressing this I'll just loosen that a little bit retension the blade test it see that's a nice ping so that's fine and you're away to go uh, now the point is about this why this makes a big difference if you're doing normal fret work uh, and, and just simple things then it's not that important where this comes into its own is if you're doing something like this for example this is a part of a, a little letter rack. You can see the word letters along there, hopefully. Uh, if you're doing something like this, there are lots of cutouts. These little slots in here. And what you've got to do is make a hole in the work uh, uh, with a small drill or something. And then put the saw blade through to cut that piece out. So, so you see, if you're doing that, you've got to keep releasing the blade. Now, if you've got the method where the, the blade in the, in the block, you've got to use this key every time. And it's, it, it, it becomes awkward after a while. Apart from the fact that it takes time, it's hard on your fingers. So you've got to keep, every time you want to take the blade out, poke it through one of these holes, you've literally got to undo this. Whereas with the quick clamp, it's easy. And I'm going to show you how. I've just got this piece of, a simple piece of scrap plywood here. And I scribbled the word keys on there. And what I've done, <coughs> what I've done, I've made some, I've joined them up, the letters. I've only done it roughly. And I've made some holes in here, so I'm going to attempt to cut those pieces out to show you why, why it's an advantage about that quick clamp. Now, if you're doing just three or four like this, it's not so important. But if you're doing something like this one, where there are, you know, quite a lot of cutouts, you'd soon get fed up and keep changing that blade over. So, what you have to do, I'll just show how easy it is. If you want to do this now, the first thing to do, release the lever to release the tension. Undo the quick clamp like so. Poke the work through the hole underneath, like so. Pop it back in there. Tighten up the quick clamp and you're good to go. And I'll just saw this piece to show it's working, all right? I'm not gonna have it too fast. I've got the camera on the back of the saw. Okay, so you've done that one. Turn the saw off, release the tension, undo that. Now you've got the next one to do. Pop the blade back in and you're ready to go. I haven't tightened the clamp down. You see, this is where it goes wrong, doesn't it? Stop. See, it's easy to forget. It's still working, all right. But this, the tension isn't on the blade. I forgot to put the lever down. That's that one. I'll do one more. As I mucked it up the first, the second time. As I say, it's so quick to change the blade if you're doing a lot. If you're doing a lot, I mean, I've got pieces I've done where, even fairly simple ones, and they've like, 120 cutouts and you can imagine if you have to keep doing that and it's difficult to do it's going to be hard on your fingers there we go now you see how simple that is to change that blade you can just do it in a jiffy you can do it with your eyes closed actually you'll notice uh one thing i should i've got to mention earlier i forget a lot of things actually uh, on my quick clamp i've got a little extra lever on it look i'll just loosen that and show you this little lever here, this doesn't come on the quick clamp as standard. I've actually fitted this myself as an extra because when you're getting a bit of an old boy like me, your hands aren't as good as they used to be when you're younger. And uh, when you're doing this, easy as it is, when you're doing this knurled nut up and down all the day, especially on a cold day, and you're doing a lot of cutouts and you keep continually doing this, it is a bit hard on your fingers. And I found that this little rod in here, it makes all the difference. You can just do it ever so quickly. And all that is, is actually a little Meccano threaded pin, a proper Meccano part. And I've just drilled a little tiny hole through the, through the knurled edge here and tapped it. 
uh, with a with a normal thread, a little tap and uh, tap and die set I've got, and I put that little threaded rod in there, and it's brilliant. Perhaps I should suggest it to Hegner to do that because it does make a difference. Anyway, I pop that blade back in. Uh, another thing I should have mentioned earlier. See, I keep forgetting things. Is when you first get your saw, and ever so often, and you want to check that the blade is vertical with the table. And the easy way to do that is to get a little set square like this, if you've got one of these. Or if you haven't got one of those, and you've got one of these, this will do. Or even a block of wood, as long as it's square, or if you've got it at right angles, you can do it. And all you need to do is just pop it on the table and move it up to the blade like that, and make sure that blade is completely vertical. Because if it isn't, what will happen is, when you're cutting something like this, it might look all right on the front, but on the back you'll get a tapered cut and on the back it will look hard, it won't look right and you won't get consistent results. So always make sure the blade is vertical. Unless you're doing anto fret and if you don't know what that is, watch my video on anto fret. Right, now here's, the, here's my little table. Uh, the reason I put this on is, first of all, it makes the actual um, table you get with the machine a little bit larger as you'll notice it goes farther to the back here which makes it useful it makes it a bit wider that way it protects your uh, original table so you won't get this um, getting damaged in any way and also it's warmer to the touch because these do get very cold in the winter if you're out look in my workshop it's freezing cold so I've made this little table up the other advantage is that you can have a much smaller hole size here for, which is, is important if you're doing delicate cuts because this slot is rather long and awkward and very delicate stuff it doesn't support it at the back so if you make one of these up it does solve that problem and I'll just show you under it's only made with a bit of cheap throwaway MDF that's all and I've just put these little strips down the side which fits so you can easily locate it I've cut, a, cut away a little piece here look on the edge um, to accommodate the little block for changing the blades so you just pop that round over the blade like that it simply drops on and there you go now I should point out that um, although this one's 20 odd years old it is uh, what I'd call a newer model uh, because it's got this quick tension release on the top and that is really worth having if you're, if you're looking to do fret work and you're going to do some intricate fret work as I mentioned before with lots of uh, internal cuts you definitely need one of these because otherwise if you don't have that what it means is every time you change the blade you've got to go to the back of the saw and adjust the tension knob here which would take you a lot longer and it's more hassle uh, indeed it on some saws it, it, it would drive you mad if you're doing a lot of cutouts and to keep doing that so this is a real boon so when you're buying a, a fret saw or scroll saw no matter what make it is always try and buy one with this quick tension release because it does make an enormous difference because on this particular machine all you've got to do once you've got the blade in is pop that lever back in an instant it's done whereas with some machines you've got to fiddle about the back they always put it in awkward ways some are even underneath would you believe it's a nightmare doing it I mean if you're not going to do uh, fancy work like this sort of thing it doesn't matter if you're just cutting around things and shapes and stuff or for general woodwork then you you needn't worry about it but if you're going to do proper fret work and scroll sorting I would look for one with that I wouldn't buy one without to be honest and I wouldn't go without that quick clamp either both of those are a necessity they do make a tremendous difference a lot of people say well don't buy an expensive saw to start with buy a cheap one and see if you like it but the problem with that is that's fair enough I suppose but the problem is that you spend that money and then you find well Hmm, it doesn't work very well and to be honest it will put you off fretwork or scroll sawing for life whereas if you buy a decent machine you may enjoy it so much that you're really happy and you're glad you spent the extra money so it doesn't always pay to buy a cheap one to start with because if you do that and then you decide you do like it you've still got to spend more money and you've spent wasted some on the cheap one and you might as well have kept the money and put it towards a decent one and if you do buy a decent one and you don't like it, you'll find it a lot easier to sell than a, a cheap one. I mean, Hegner saws, for example, are very much in demand. And, I, and when I'm talking about Hegner, because this I've got Hegner, obviously, and I'm, I'm talking about my Hegner saw, there are other makes that are, that are probably equally as good, but I've no experience particularly of them, only what I've read. But it, as I say, if you buy a decent quality machine, you'll have no trouble selling it if you do find you don't like it. But... I would be surprised because most people once they start doing it they find it very addictive actually so it's well well worth buying a worthwhile one if you want to know more about buying a saw I have done two videos on 
choosing uh, a scroll saw you'll find them in my YouTube channel and it's worth um, looking at actually. There is an excellent website you could uh, try which is called ukworkshop.co.uk it's a British website and it's very good. It's a general woodworking site and they've got sections on all aspects of woodworking and even a special section on scroll saw working. Uh, you'll find um, lots of very helpful people in there and if you've got any questions to ask about fret work or scroll saw work or whatever, I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. They're very helpful people. You, you'll even find me in there under the name of Scrimper. It's a well worthwhile place to visit actually. Anyway, I've said enough about this saw, I think. If you've got any questions, uh, ask them. Please ask them in the comments or go to UK Workshop and ask them in the scroll saw section and I'll see if I can answer them or somebody else might do. So, bye for now. <laughs>